This is Mr. Sexy Pants, prequel to The Virgin Next Door. Written by Lauren Blakely. Performed by Vanessa Edwin as Veronica and Teddy Hamilton as Milo. One. All the Little Sex Monkeys. Veronica. Have you ever wanted something so badly that it takes you completely by surprise? Your desire starts like a low hum, turns into a sweet tingle, then blast off. It rockets into an intense, naked longing. I've gotten that feeling with books, with dogs, and definitely with sandwiches. But I didn't expect to feel this way about 500 weekly words. But now that the opportunity to write a dating column dangles in front of me, I've got to grab this carrot no matter what. That's where my head is at now as I prep for a secret side hustle meeting. I want to nail every aspect of this job interview right down to the look. I zip up my dress. Smoothing a hand along my waist, I consider my reflection in the mirror on the closet door in my bedroom. My cat eyes me with imperious suspicion from one of the pillows on my bed. I think I look smashing, but a woman cannot dress on her opinion alone. That's why my sister is here. I spin around, skirt twirling, and put the question to Hazel, who is sitting on the edge of the bed with my tiny dog curled up in her lap. What do you think? Is this what you'd wear to an interview to become a sex columnist? I could ask Google, but I'm scared to hear the internet's thoughts on this fashion quandary. Hazel screws up the corner of her lips, giving me a long once over, then renders her ruling. You look like you have a secret. I smile coyly. So it's perfect then for an anonymous column, I say with a little jut of the hip. Come to think of it, yes, she says with a smile. Hey, that's a good one. I scurry out to the kitchen, grab a notebook from the table, and jot, come to think of it, on a list of top five awesome column titles. I snap the notebook closed, then snag my purse. Before I take off, I kiss my pets goodbye, and I head out, Hazel following me. When we reach the sidewalk, my sister gives me a hug. You'll be great. There is no one more qualified for this gig than you. Maybe this is why I've been waiting for 26 years. I've been holding out for an online column, I say playfully. I mean, it's not a bad reason to wait, she says dryly as we let go. Then we say goodbye, and I turn toward Hudson Street. As the spring sun dips in the sky, I review my original pitch for the online site, The Dating Pool. What about a sex and dating column written from the point of view of a virgin? The column only requires a few hours a week, and though I definitely don't want to leave my job as a children's book editor, I do love talking about sex, writing about sex, and thinking about it. I'm sure I'd like sex, if I ever had it. But if I can nab this project, I'll have an outlet at last for all the little sex monkeys rattling their cages in my head. Watch out, dating pool. Here comes one opinionated, battery-operated, boyfriend-loving virgin who believes a dirty mind's a terrible thing to waste. When I reach the dating pool's office, I stop and stare up at the building, taking in the sleek facade. In a moment ripped from a rom-com, I'm that woman stepping into the big, wide world of New York media. Only I've grown up in and around the city. I love New York, and New York loves me. Chin up, lipstick on, I head inside. The elevator shoots me up to the fifth floor, where the helpful receptionist escorts me to Bellamy Hart's office. She's a romance goddess, and her podcast is an absolute must-listen. She's also a total badass boss babe, and she looks the part in her designer jeans, spiky boots, and black twin set. Thank you for coming in at the last minute, she says as she holds the door open to her office. Thank you for asking me here, I say, already a little giddy. She replied to my email 10 minutes after I sent it last night. I might very well frame her note. I must hear more. Do not take your idea elsewhere. Well then, here I am. We sit on her green couch, and she waggles her tablet. First of all, let me say your column ideas completely grabbed me. I agree that columns of dating lists, dating do's and don'ts, and dating rules are so overdone, she says with a sigh. But your takes sound fresh. I sit straighter and fight off a smile. 
I won't crack open the champagne yet. It's a good thing I've been storing them up from a few years on the New York dating market, aka the alligator pit. And I can tackle them in a way that appeals to all your readers, with a little humor, I say. I elaborate on my ideas. 10 things people assume about virgins, sex tips from those who haven't, how to break the news to your date, wear whatever you want, and other things you could be doing tonight. I see it as the dating misadventures of a virgin with a naughty mind. Bellamy sighs deeply, then smiles. I can see the clicks going up, up, up. When can you start? My heart bounces. I can send you my first column this week. I, Veronica Valentine, children's book editor by day, am about to become an anonymous sexpert by night. Two, man dessert, Veronica. This kind of opportunity calls for a celebration. Since my sister's on deadline with her next novel, I text my friend Ellie and ask if she has time to meet me for a slice of cake. Ellie, we have an evening shoot and I'm due on set in 45 minutes, but I can meet you for 10 of them and I promise to make it the best 10 minutes of your day. Veronica, I don't know about that, honey. The 10 minutes I spent with the flyer this morning were pretty damn good. But time with you is always a treat, too. Ellie, as if I'd try to compete with the flyer. No mere mortal, man or woman, ever could. Veronica, I suspect that's entirely true. See you at Piece of Cake. I walk to my favorite cake shop in the city, stopping at the gleaming white storefront in Chelsea. A selection of mouth-watering delights beckons me from the lavish window display. Luscious chocolate slices, delicate pink frosting on sponge cake, festive mint green slathered over vanilla. This is heaven. I push open the door, hunting for my friend in the empty shop, which closes in 30 minutes. I don't see Ellie, but I find an absolutely stunning piece of dessert behind the counter. Man dessert. I'm gonna need a minute to gawk. Hello, hottie. With a trim beard, strong jaw, and inked arms, the man arranging cakes in the display case belongs on the cover of one of my sister's romance novels. I'll buy a dozen copies, thank you very much. The man turns my way and flashes me a smile that zings straight down my body. Make that two dozen copies. I smile back, and as I head to the counter, my phone pings with a new text from my friend. Ellie. Running late, please forgive me. If you must start without me, I understand. Cake is just too hard to resist. But cake isn't the thing I'm going to have a hard time resisting. Staring is. At the counter, I meet the gaze of the blue-eyed man with a winning smile. What can I do for you? He asks. We've got cake, if that's what you're in the market for. But if you're looking for the meaning of the universe, I make no promises. That's a hell of an opening line, and it makes me laugh. It also challenges me to come up with something that matches the promise of him. Are you fending off that many requests for existential answers? I am, but the slogan says it all. He points to the words on his apron. Cake is proof. That makes perfect sense. I meet his playful gaze with one of my own. Cake is, indeed, proof there is meaning in my universe. What a wonderful universe, he says with a spark that makes me want to keep playing word ping pong. But I might have to add dogs and books to the evidence, I say. I hope you don't mind the addendum, he scoffs. Do I look like the type of person who's bothered by addendums? I arch a brow, resisting a smile. What does that type of person look like? I'm trying to draw a mental picture, and I'm coming up blank. What would they look like? He points his thumbs at his chest. Not this guy. I think addendums are fantastic, especially when they involve books, dogs, beer, and cake. I'm giddy from the flirting. It's almost too good to be true. But see, I don't think I'd include beer in my favorites. We'll just have to agree on three out of the four for our list. Fair enough, he says. I can work with a 75% match. Match. I'm zinging inside. So what's good here these days? I ask, glancing toward the cake selection. Is this your first time here? No way. I'm definitely not a piece of cake virgin. I say, savoring the way the V word rolls off my tongue like sugar. 
and what it does to him. His eyes darken, his nostrils flare. He takes a beat, then says, Then you should have a little of everything. It's our special today. Tempting. What does a little of everything taste like? I ask, hoping no one else comes in the shop this evening. An unlikely scenario, since piece of cake is almost always deluged with last minute customers before it closes. This sliver of time with Mr. Flirt will end all too soon. It tastes like what you should have. The rasp of his voice thrums deliciously across all my erogenous zones, which right now include every single molecule in and on me. Then he exhales heavily, as if he's recalibrating, downshifting. But I'd also recommend the vanilla celebration cake. It goes with polka dots. He says, his gaze sailing up and down my dress. I'll take it. As he moves to the display case, strong arms reaching in to grab the cake, I try to look away, and I fail miserably. I am officially an ogler. True, I have a thing for blazing guns like his, but I'm omnivorous, really. I want toned arms, kind eyes, a clever brain, and a big heart. I want it all. That's probably why I'm holding my V card at age 26. I haven't met someone who revs my engine on all cylinders. I'm not sure one guy in a cake shop will tick all my boxes, but I'd like to learn how many check marks he can make. He glances my way. Want me to bring this to you at a table or the cake bar? There's only one answer. The cake bar runs along the counter. If I sit there, I can keep talking with him. The cake bar? I say with a small smile as I move away from the register and along the counter, where I pop onto a tall metal stool. Good choice, he murmurs. He slides a sharp knife through the cake, then serves it, handing me the plate and a fork. I hope you enjoy it, Miss Polka Dot. I roam my gaze over him. I hope so too, Mr. Dessert. He smiles and then turns away to wash his hands. I check my phone. I'm a terrible friend for hoping Ellie might be later still. The universe must be granting wishes today because a new message blinks up at me. Ellie. Don't hate me, but I can't make it. Trains are slow and I need to get to the set. Veronica. I'm glad you didn't make it and I'll tell you why later. Then I put the phone away and take a bite of cake chased by flirty, dirty hope. Three, other words for dating, Milo. Dear self, Joel did not ask you to fill in today to flirt with his customers. You are here to serve cake while he takes his wife, your very good friend, to an ultrasound appointment. You are not here, you dirty, stinking pervert, to check out the absolute fox in the pink dress with the white polka dots with that chestnut hair curling just so over her shoulders and those plush red lips. Nope, you are here as a good friend and absolutely nothing more. Sincerely, the angel on your shoulder. Except, what's so wrong with flirting? It's not like anything is going to come of it. I know better than to get involved because dating leads to disaster and I've got the scars to prove it. But it's been a while since I've had a great conversation, and I doubt I'll see this woman again. Angel, stand down. Devil, you're up. I hang around her side of the cake bar as she picks up her fork and takes a bite of the slice in front of her. Mmm, ten out of ten, that's my review. Are you a reviewer? I ask, bracing myself. Online reviews are the bane of my existence. Laughing, she shakes her head. Nope. But I could leave one on Google if you'd like. Ah, oh, that's sweet. I appreciate it, but there's no need. The internet is a terrible thing. We should abolish it. She shoots me a doubtful look. Damn, we were vibing for a while there, Mr. Dessert. We might be three out of five now. I groan over the top style as I wipe down the counter. No, don't break my heart. You love the internet? Imagine how much nicer people would be to each other if they didn't have the keyboard and a screen to hide behind. To hide their lies. I'll grant you that, but I'm not one of those internet haters. You're not going to be able to back me up against that wall, she says, dipping the fork into the frosting. 
I'd like to back her up against the wall, hike up that dress and grind against her. She brings the fork to those lush lips, then licks off the frosting, savoring it, doing indecent things to the utensil with her tongue. I whimper. Must focus. I shake off the dirty thoughts like a dog getting out of the shower. You know how it goes. You're in sync, you're out of sync. Before I know it, you're going to tell me you don't like... I pause to cast about for something universally beloved. Flowers. She scoffs. Come on, that was a softball. Who would possibly hate flowers? I laugh, then set down the rag next to the sink. Sometimes you need softballs. So we are officially back to four out of six, which is 66%, if you were wondering. I wiggle a brow like I just said the sexiest thing. You are such a percentage show-off. I take a bow, then park my hands on the counter. What they don't tell you in middle school is that percentages are the only math you'll ever really need as an adult. I call them the unsung heroes of math, she says, then waggles the fork my way. Want to bite? I want to bite her shoulder, lick her neck, nibble on her earlobe. I would, but I can't eat on the job. I whisper, shaking my head in faux annoyance. The boss is such a hard ass. Oh, I bet he is, she says. He's the worst, I tease, because Joel runs a tight ship. So I must resist your very tempting offer. Your loss, she says, then pops the bite in her mouth and moans around it. Kill me now. I try to focus on something else, anything. What did we last talk about? Oh, right math. But I admit that arithmetic has its uses. She brandishes her fork as if to punctuate my point. I will see your arithmetic and will add fractions. Caught you there. Fractions are percentages, Miss Polka Dot, I say. You can't count them twice. I know that. Do you have something against synonyms now? Sheesh. Sometimes we need more than one way of saying something, she says a little challenging. I say we keep fractions and percentages. Am I actually getting turned on by her fast brain? Oh, hell yes I am. I would never ever want to abolish synonyms, I say. I probably wouldn't return here if you did. That'd be the end of this whole thing, she says, waving from me to her. This thing. Could this thing lead to one hot night? Devil says yes. I should fill in for Iris's hubby more often. Shame, I wouldn't want that to happen. So on our favorites list, we'll keep synonyms, percentages, and how about... My gaze drifts toward the window as the sun shines, unseasonably warm on an April afternoon. We add sunny days in April. She hums her approval. It sounds like we have an agreement then. I believe we do, Miss Polka Dot, I say and I'm this close to asking her out for coffee. Coffee's just coffee, after all. It won't even count as breaking my no-dating-this-year vow. And coffee could lead to one hot night between the sheets. But before I can ask, the door swings open and a gaggle of teenage girls pours in. So much for synonyms for dating. Four. Name that crush. Veronica. He's busy. No big deal. He runs the place, I bet, so I'll come back another time. I don't want to be pushy. I do want to give him time to do his job. But when I finish my treat, the place is still a zoo. I bust my own plate, setting it in the wash bin under the utensil counter. Then I spin back around. The line still snakes around the display case. Another time. I catch his eye and wave as I mouth, goodbye. He gives a what-can-you-do smile, then waves back. I leave a little happier and a little sadder. A few days later, nerves sweep through my chest as I near a piece of cake. I can turn around, abandon this mission, grab a book, curl up with my pets, watch a show with Ellie. I don't need to see that man again. I don't need to get his name. I can just go. But then I remember the way I felt when he looked into my eyes. Swoopy. Nerves be damned. 
I'm doing this. My flats click clack across the sidewalk as I near the white shop with its pink and green awning, its sparkling window, its promise of culinary pleasure. I want other pleasures and I want to explore them with him. Deep breath, I grab the door and head inside. My shoulders drop, my heart thudding to the ground. He's not behind the counter. Some other guy is, a teenager with red hair and a freckled face. I march up to him. Hi, I'm wondering if that guy with the beard and the blue eyes is here? I ask, and wow, I sound like a creepy stalker. His brow knits. Oh, Joel's friend? Nope, he doesn't work here. He was helping out that day. I swallow past the weirdness of my next question. Oh, does he have a name? The guy scratches his chin. Michael? Matthew? Mateo? One of those. If not, it was definitely Robert. He says, then another customer strolls in, and I feel exactly 1,200% sillier than I felt five minutes ago. Hmm, I guess I do need percentages. A couple weeks later, I'm pacing across my balcony, trying to figure out what I want to write about for my third column. The first two ticked their way to the top of the dating pool's most popular article list, so I need to keep the streak alive. I walk along my tiny patio, back and forth past the little ceramic pots in my city garden, mulling over ideas. I need a killer starting line, but I don't quite have it yet, so I step inside, grab my metal watering can, and fill it up at the sink. Then I return to my deck, watering the little pots of sage that I recently planted, then the kale, the pole beans, and the rosemary too. I set down the can as my cat, hot stuff, rubs against my ankle, purring as he marks me. Bending down, I stroke his soft head for a bit, then stand and lean against the brick railing, checking out my patch of Grove Street, lined with pretty trees stretching their branches in the spring. It's the kind of block where you might shoot a movie, the kind of block where anything feels possible. Resting my elbows on the edge of the brick, I watch the evening roll by. My heart thumps a little faster as the silhouette of a man comes into view below. Closer, then even closer. I recognize those strong arms, that square jaw, the delicious amount of scruff. That's him. Mr. Dessert, I call out, but he keeps walking because... Earbuds. Damn earbuds. He's probably listening to a baking podcast about making delicious cake for the woman you can't stop thinking about. I try to wave, too, but he doesn't look up. This sigh. Then he passes me, and I get a back view for the first time. Oh. My. Stars. Did I just become an ass woman? I think so. I can't look away from his booty. My eyes are drawn to his perfect tush and his fantastic pants. Trim, checked, blue. They're fashionable and such a welcome change from what most men wear. Baggy, boring cargo shorts, or too loose jeans, or barf khakis. I shall call him Mr. Sexy Pants, I declare as he turns into a nearby building. I don't feel so silly anymore. I feel inspired. I break out my phone and dictate my column. Five, his first appearance, Veronica. The Virgin Club, breaking the good news to your date. If you're going to have a crush, you might as well name that crush. I gave mine a name today. I call him Mr. Sexy Pants. I've seen him around once or twice. Fine, fine, one time we talked, the other time I just stared like a peeping Tom as he walked past me on the street below. But I don't think anyone could blame me. He's witty, funny, and so easy on the eyes. He's also become the object of my fantasies. Yep, I'm not afraid to admit I've whispered my crush's name alone at night with my battery-operated friends. I've asked him to do unholy things to my body alone in the dark. Hell, I've begged. Which makes me wonder, how would I tell him about my V-card if we ever had the chance? The reveal is a thing the unplucked have to consider. Some might think a virgin's top worry is how it'll feel when she finally does the deed. 
And if you're into guys, there's the will it fit question. Me? The thing that keeps me up at night is how I'm going to break the ice. If we go out for drinks, do I order a virgin pina colada, give the drink a coquettish look, then say, the cocktail isn't the only virgin here? Or I could say, wanna put your pina in my colada sometime? Maybe I'd take him shopping for olive oil, hold up a bottle of extra virgin and say, this, me, same. But those feel twee. Then there's the super direct approach. Over a cup of coffee, I could clear my throat, then say, hey, I haven't ever tried reverse cowgirl, girl on top, doggy style, or any variation on the above, but I'd really like to with you. First date, fifth date, text, in person? What's a never been touched down there gal to do? Do you treat it like a secret or a fact? I'm here to tell you, the choice is all yours. There is no right or wrong way. You don't owe it to anyone to reveal it in their time. Do it in your own time. Say it when you meet, or don't say it when you meet. Share it over drinks or coffee, or don't. Wait till the fifth date or the 10th or the first. It's your virginity, it's not anyone else's. As for me, when I meet the right guy, I'll probably keep it simple and say something like, want to go where only a battery operated friend has gone before? Until then, I'll be picturing Mr. Sexy Pants, your friendly neighborhood virgin. Six, the synonym slinger, Milo. A month or so later. Today is the day I am wound up like a top. All my bones are cranked tight, my nerves stretched thin. I've been waiting for this chance for months. But before I walk into this hornet's nest of a meeting, I need to burn off my worries, so I cruise along the high line on my bike. My thighs throbbing and my lungs burning, I rehearse the lines I practiced with my brother so I won't flub them in front of the lawyers. As I fly, the warm June wind whipping past me, I prep in my head till the words are second nature. I run down my mental checklist again as I exit the high line and cut across town to my block. I have all the documentation. I have all the information I need to make my point. I turn onto my street, head down, when, whoa, there she is. The cake babe, the witty woman, the clever fork-licking cinnamon slinger. I haven't seen her since that day in the cake shop. And I'm seeing her now, on my block, the very second I have someplace else to be. Are you fucking kidding me, universe? And even though I'm still running far away from dating and the disasters it brings, I've been secretly hoping I'd bump into her again. Hell, I've been wishing she'd appear. Ever since the day I met her, I've imagined this scenario. So today, of all days, the universe delivers the fork liquor? Thanks a fucking lot, fate. Now is the worst possible moment. I can't afford any distraction. But if she's here... Maybe she lives on my street and I can find her tomorrow. I'll talk to her then and explain about the cake shop. Then a truck wheels around the corner. Shit, I'm about to get clipped if I don't hop onto the sidewalk. I jump my bike onto the concrete and then everything happens in slow motion and all at once. Boom. I'm about to smash into the woman from the cake shop. This was not how I was supposed to get her name, not when I am late for the most important meeting of my life. But when I spot a glass slipper on the sidewalk, I concoct a plan. Find out about Milo's plans and Veronica's plans and how Murphy's Law is about to capsize all of them in The Virgin Next Door, performed by Teddy Hamilton and Vanessa Edwin, and available everywhere. This has been Mr. Sexy Pants, written by Lauren Blakely, performed by Vanessa Edwin as Veronica and Teddy Hamilton as Milo, produced by Audibly Addicted Productions and Tyler Whitlatch at Plunk Productions in partnership with Lauren Blakely, editorial management by Kara Hildebrand, business management by K.P. Simmon, story and production copyright 2022 by Lauren Blakely Books.